By all accounts, it was a happy childhood with cousins and friends. Basil attended the Western Senior School and at the age of 16 in 1936, became a part of the first group of 22 indentured apprentices at the electricity department, which was then situated next to Vonju House, now Pompeii Museum, on the water side of Bay Street opposite George Street. George Cho uh, Basil chose the electricity department simply because he was curious about what went on behind the high walls surrounding the compound. Two days after starting his five-year apprenticeship, he told his mother that he was ready to quit, <laughs> his curiosity having been satisfied. He was sternly told that, what he, that that was too bad and that he would have to finish what he had started, which he did for the next 44 years. As he said to me, you know, Felicity, in those days, we did as we were told. We did not question our parents. We were obedient. It was at the electricity department that Basil noticed with horror that the workers in the distribution section in particular were mostly illiterate and signed their pay sheets with X's. His first union inclinations were stirred. World War II was declared three years into Basil's apprenticeship in September of 1939. He'd been enthralled by World War I stories and reading about Clive of India and Sir Francis Drake, and he promised himself that if another war came, he was going. And so when the government of the Bahamas uh, set up a volunteer guard, later to become the Bahamas Volunteer Defense Force, Basil was one of the first to enlist. The Bahamas, um, if you didn't know, became a very important Air Force base during World War II, giving locals the opportunity to join the war effort and to be trained in aviation and aircraft mechanics. This base was at uh, Oaks Field, and at one point, I think the number was 2,500 extra people in the country, which was a, a big amount of people at that time. And in fact, it was interesting in writing this book, I realized that in my class at Queens College, there were about eight of us who were the products of wartime marriages. Um, uh, most of the others were the marriages of Canadians and Brits who had come here to work at the base and married local. Uh, Basil, I think, was the only one who, you know, married whilst he was in England. So, so that was an interesting realization for me. The appointment of the uh, former King of England, also the Duke of Windsor in 1940, put the Bahama Islands on the international map. And the concerns for his safety, uh, stories and rumors of potential kidnappings by the Germans, enhanced the security patrols around New Providence by the Volunteer Defense Force and later the Bahamas Battal Battalion. In 1940 as well, because of the significant losses to Germany, the British Royal Air Force put out a call for volunteers from the colonies to come to England to join the fight. In the words of the British wartime Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill, and I quote, the Navy can lose us the war, but only the Air Force can win it. Therefore, our supreme effort must be to gain overwhelming mastery in the air. The fighters are our salvation, but the bombers alone provide the means of victory. And these, in fact, are the words that I actually end my, my book with on page 254, underscoring the most important contribution of the Royal Air Force to the victory. So when Britain put out this call, Basil and eight other black Bahamians immediately applied to the Committee for the War Effort to be interviewed and hopefully to be selected. 
They were all denied, although all of the whites who applied were selected. Whilst the other seven blacks gave up, Basil tried a second time and was again rejected. Finally, on his third try, with T.A. Tooth, a prominent black lawyer on the previously all-white committee, Basil was selected as the first uh, black Royal Air Force volunteer from the Bahama Islands. Indeed, he tells the story of how shocked he was when he arrived in England and saw so many black volunteers from the other Caribbean islands. As a younger family friend said recently when he heard the story, there Basil was trying to get himself killed and they wouldn't let him because he was black and therefore not good enough. <laughs> and so, on August the 31st, 1941, Basil began his 17-day journey to England on a seaplane from Eastern Parade via the United States and Canada and across the Atlantic Ocean in a convoy of ships, 49 ships, zigzagging to avoid German U-boats until he arrived at Liverpool, England, and then headed to London to take exams. He spent a total of eight years in England, six in the RAF volunteer group, and two post-war doing uh, studies for his career in engineering at home. His persevering spirit was again demonstrated when he joined the RAF first as ground crew for the aircraft. In other words, he was a mechanic on the ground fixing the aircraft. It took him another 18 months of additional studying and examinations in his spare time to finally realize his dream of becoming a member of the flight crew as a flight engineer. And he became this in February 1943 on Bomber Command. As a flight engineer, he managed the engines and the fuel consumption when the aircraft was flying, sitting beside the pilot. He also qualified as a bomb aimer, but seldom flew in that capacity. He was briefly on 115 Squadron, before the pilot had an epileptic fit and um, was discharged and thereafter Basil and the other members of his air crew volunteered and were selected for the newly formed Pathfinder Force. The front leader of the aircraft in Bomber Command whenever they went on an air raid over enemy, enemy territory. The Pathfinder Force was a distinguished group who, in the words of their founder, Group Commander Donald Bennett, also an Australian, said, deliberately stuck their necks out to reduce main force casualties and accepted a higher degree of risk for themselves. Instead of 30 sorties over enemy territory, they did 45 or more. They were the aircraft that flew in first to the target, and their job was to fly slower and lower and drop flares on the targets so that the second wave of bombers coming in would more accurately bomb the targets. Up to that point, they missed the targets more often than they hit them. The whole point of the Pathfinder Force was to increase the accuracy of the bombing. And as you can appreciate, the Pathfinder Force put themselves very much in the way of danger. And to survive uh, on, 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 on that squadron was, was a miracle in itself. Basil's seven-member air crew was stationed at Warboys initially and then nearby Upton in the Fenlands of East Anglia. 
His pilot was the famous.